I was asked by a friend of mine to put together a video on what I use my 3D printer for. And so I figured I'd do a quick video of some of the prints I've done and uh, just go over some things. Uh, I just kind of enjoy doing very odds and ends. One of my sons is a school teacher, so I do trinkets and he takes them in and gives them as gifts and that type of thing. Um, one of the more extensive projects I've done is this uh, Millennium Falcon. It uh, actually, little deal here, spins. It's got a little turret on the bottom. I actually had to glue the feet in place. But each one of these sections was a piece and it, it all snapped together. The center part was a print, then each section is a print, and then everything just snaps together. And um, I mean, it took you know multiple hours. I don't remember how many hours that took to print. It's kind of fun though. Another one I've got, this is a rattlesnake. And it actually has a rattle, I'll hold it by the mic. Hopefully you can hear that. I did a little red tongue on it. This is a uh, single print. It prints all on the bed at one time and everything moves. It's an articulated uh, rattlesnake, basically. It's basically, it, it prints in some kind of a circle. I don't remember what it was. That type of a concept on, on the printer. And then when you pull it off the printer, you have to loosen up a little bit of the, uh, the pieces. But thing, and then the uh, tail actually just snaps into place. This is one, a print that I actually paid for the file to, uh, to use. This print and this print came with the printer. Uh, when you get a printer, they print really nice, but it's these prints are associated with the printer and the parameters are all pre-adjusted and everything else. So they typically will print very well. Then there's what they call a benchy. The benchy is uh, people that aren't into the 3D printing. This is basically a boat to them, but all the different uh, measurements, the sizes. This is a you know for doing benchmarks to how well your printer is printing, and when you're printing not not real well. There'll be stringing of the uh, print in between different things because of uh, the print has to jump across. And uh, so it's a, it's a test print for uh, calibrating your printer. Another test print I've got. Of course, a couple, I always have a couple test prints. This is another one I had printed initially. It gives you quite a few different things. It gives you an overhang to see uh, different angles that your printer will test. It's a 3D printer test. Hopefully you can read that. And then there's different holes for, uh, you can put a micrometer on it and measure everything. Make sure the dimensions are coming out and you've got your printer set up correctly. You spend more time setting up the printer and calibrating it initially when you get it and trying to figure out how it's working then you do um, actually print anything halfway useful another calibration print for you know just test printing on what's going on uh, did print a couple gray ghosts i think i'll print these in white and uh, use those for halloween hang them from uh, lamps and different things. More calibration. These are calibration cubes. Basically you print these and these are 20 millimeters on all squares. 
So if, if you measure it with your micrometers and uh, you get 20 millimeters, you're or within you know a certain percentage, you're pretty much dead on with your printer as to uh, having it set up right. And this is another calibration. Um, the uh, extrusion rate or flow rate, which is how fast the filament goes through and uh, the thing. Typically your printer, I'm just gonna make a number of a setup to be a hundred. Um, when I made some modifications, uh, before I made the modifications, I had to set it to 93, I think it was the flow rate. Uh, our extrusion rate was had to be you know, a little bit under 100. And then uh, when I changed the uh, extruder, I had to uh, uh, change it to 141. But this is, you know, different measurement for calibration. This is kind of neat. It's just a uh, fidget toy. I've made quite a few of these and given them to my son to give out. Basically, this is a, uh, a print. It just prints right on the surface, breaks loose, and then you have to work it a little bit to get it to where it needs to be to, to flip. But I'll sit there and I have one by the TV. I'll just sit there while I'm watching a movie or something and just, because I'm always fidgeting with something. People that know me know that. Uh, another articulated dragon who just lost his one fang. This was another one I paid for the file for the print. This just is, it moves all around, comes off and it, it's, you know, the full movement. It's a one, one part print on the, um, the printer. The legs, you know, flop around also. Just fun to print. I think, a pr I can't remember the numbers. I think the last time I printed the Dragon was probably about a 19 hour print. Then there's the uh, articulated uh, octopus. Base, again, this is a, uh, a print. It prints in a concept like that. It pulls off, you work the legs a little bit and again, I've printed a lot of these, uh, gave them to my son so he can uh, use them in his treat baskets. New thing I actually purchased, this uh, the file to do this print. It's another octopus, but it's more of a squid looking thing. It's a little more realistic. Um, takes a number of hours to print also. I mean, everything takes hours and times. But it's, again, this is an articulated um uh, deal he prints in a concept like that so it fits on the uh the bed and then when it's done printing you just pull it off the bed and go from there okay <clears throat> then i've made a couple mods on the uh uh, printer itself for feeding the uh, filament. This was a one piece print. Took a little bit of time to get it to spin like that, but the filament comes through and feeds just a little bit differently into the uh, uh, piece. This is a, a free file that I downloaded. This was my first pass at a, a to fix my chair. Everybody's probably got a, a chair where you sit down on it and it just the plunger in it just goes down and you're, you're like three inches off the floor. So you pull it up or you can replace the plunger or whatever or you just use it uh, sitting three three inches off the floor. So what I did is I designed uh, a couple little holes. I don't know how well this is going to show up in the, the black. 
and both sides it, it interconnects so it stays together and the actual design that I use put two little rims around here and I put a zip tie around this so this basically goes around the shaft to hold the printer for or the uh, your chair from uh, sliding up and down so you don't have to mess around uh, replacing the plunger. I mean typically when I sit in a chair I want it at a certain position I never adjust it and it just stays there. So this was something that I created using a CAD program and uh, then just printed it with like that type of a concept on the thing. Pulled it off and just started using them. I've actually fixed uh, three different chairs um, doing it, you know. Now for the, the real reason I bought the printer was for these, these trim bands that I've um, designed. Basically these trim bands are for um, my fishing poles. And what happens is when you're making a fishing rod, you put on, a, you've got the rod, the blank coming through, and then you've got the cork, and the rod goes into the cork, and then this covers up any deficiencies where the rod enters into the cork. And what the, um, uh, they usually give you is a little piece of rubber to slide over that and you glue it down and so basically I've designed a part a two dollar part and justified buying an entire 3d setup for a two dollar part that this is my justification for buying uh, doing the printer but I can print these any size I want this particular printer does not give uh, as precise, I mean, to the millimeter that that I would like. Uh, I mean, it's got a, a four millimeter nozzle. I could make it a two millimeter nozzle, uh, which probably get a little more precise. But I can print this, and if I needed to, I could uh, ream it out just a little bit and go from there. So that pretty much is uh, where I'm at with the different prints. What I will do is uh, start a, you know, I'll show on an actual fishing rod where these uh, trim bands go and how they go in and uh, get a better idea because that was the main reason why I bought the printer. So for the trim band portion, basically when you get a fishing rod, you, you get the blank and then you take your cork and you you ream out the uh, pieces of cork to uh, get it to the right size for the to fit on a rod based on the diameter diameters of the uh, piece so when you do that you get the bottom end like that there's the the gap right in here where the trim band will go. So basically taking the trim bands which are um, pieces of rubber they call them winding checks, trim bands the uh, you end up with lots of these things but they're just flimsy pieces of rubber that go around and I mean they stretch and they do the job but I figured I wanted something a little different so I took the trim band I'll slide it over the end of the rod So what we'll have 
is this trim band will go right up against that. This trim band will go here, be about a nine inch section. A little tough to demonstrate when you're using a uh, seven and a half foot pole. So that's the, the concept. So you have the, the trim bands that cover up any discrepancies there, here, and you know. And right here so when you're reaming these corks out or the different grips you you end up with different sizes so like I said this was my justification for uh, actually buying a printer that would no way pay for the cost of the printer <laughs>